Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Animal Artist Collective. If you're new to the Animal Artist Collective, we are a collective of artists here on YouTube that are super passionate about animals and animal conservation and also really passionate about making art about these animals. Every other month we have a particular biome that we pick an animal from and create a video like today on that animal and at least 50% of the proceeds of the originals made here in these videos go directly to helping animal conservation and to a particular charity of our choosing. Currently we have eight full-time members and one guest joining us this month and all of their information is going to be listed down below but I did want to extend a very warm welcome to Mary who is our guest please make sure to go check out her video. Again, all the links will be down below. With that, I wanted to mention that our current goal at the moment is to stick to 10 permanent members of the collective with rotating guests here and there as we go forward. While we would love to extend an official invitation to everybody who's interested, around 10 members is about all we feel that we can sort of manage at this point and hopefully in the future we can have more members join but for now I think a good solid 10 is a really good number which means we will very quickly be filling our last spots with rotating guests like I mentioned but we highly encourage unofficial participation in any way, shape, or form, whether you make a video or just post something on Instagram or somewhere else. Make sure to tag us at Animal Artist Collective on Instagram or Animal Artist Co. on Twitter. And we would love to see what you're creating in the themes that we've been working in and give you a little love and share on those platforms because we love spreading the knowledge knowledge and conservation messages about the amazing creatures that we have on our earth. With all that being said, let's start talking about what I am creating here in the video. This month, you guys picked over on our Facebook page that you wanted us to do urban wildlife for the biome, and that meant that we had a really fun variety of animals to pick from that basically have been cohabitating with us in our cities, in some suburban areas, and basically are living alongside us, and a lot of them are thriving quite well. When this particular biome was voted for, I kind of went back and forth about what animal I wanted to choose because I always love being able to see wildlife really close to home and I realized one of my favorite animals that I interact with fairly regularly would be squirrels. And if any of you knew me back in college, we actually joked that our unofficial school mascot was the squirrel because we just had so, so many and they were seemingly fairly friendly and very used to humans. Whenever I had the chance, I would actually love to try to interact with them on campus and kind of pretend feed them uh, leaves and things like that since they were so comfortable and I would always be really careful not to reach out and pet them or possibly scare them in any way uh, that could be dangerous for either one of us but I just loved how friendly they seem to be and the fun thing about a trip I just recently went on at the end of this last year my husband and I actually went out to London for seven days and a couple other countries but while we were in London there were some super friendly squirrels that were right outside of Buckingham Palace. We had some very, very friendly squirrels that uh, I have some footage of here. <laughs> so as you can see, squirrels have a special place in my heart and are typically pretty cute. I love how they sort of hold their food um, and ruffle their tails up if they are tree squirrels and things like that. And so 
Uh, I have always loved sort of interacting with all sorts of wildlife that we have in our cities and near our houses and I wanted to quickly mention that I feel like it's really important for people to understand that while we are cohabitating with these animals we need to be really conscious of how we are affecting animals because you think about uh, how many squirrels you see or different birds uh, on a daily basis that are out eating our trash or you know we're giving them all sorts of foods that are not necessarily what their bodies are made to be consuming and we can really have some major impacts on these kinds of animals and while a lot of these animals are doing quite well living alongside us and are seemingly happy and thriving we need to be really careful about how we are affecting them and how we are cohabitating and sharing this space uh, the first thing that comes to mind is to really be respectful when you're out in public spaces that have signs about not feeding the birds or the squirrels or what have you, whatever kind of wildlife you might have there um, or out in parks and other places that are maybe a larger variety of animals. Be really respectful and be a little bit more proactive about what you might be feeding these animals. I know I grew up uh, taking bits of stale bread and feeding the ducks when I was younger and while I really loved that memory of spending time with my family, I realized that I didn't really give it a second thought about if that was healthy or not for those birds and I know that there is more and more information coming out about what we need to be careful about feeding them and how we're treating these animals that are trying to just share the space with us. So as you can see I used my Schmincke watercolors to paint this in my sort of typical uh, color palette and I am trying to push myself a little bit more with that and create more depth and texture with the paints and add in both the sort of greens into the purples of the fur and things like that and a little bit more of the pinks and purples into the plants and try to stretch myself a little bit more. I originally thought of this as being a fairly simple piece and added a lot of detail and a lot of shading with my indigo blue prismacolors. I actually ended up using a variety of three different indigo prismacolor colored pencils, uh, different types of colored pencils, and finally realized I had an old set of the Vertifin, which were actually the very first colored pencils that I ever purchased, which were the incorrect pencils uh, for a class back in high school and I realized that that worked pretty well for outlining for my sort of soft line work that I like to do at the end that you're seeing here. This was done on a 9 by 12 watercolor paper and this is actually a new paper to me. If you have seen my last video, I did a huge haul video of various products that I have that I'm excited to be using and this is actually the watercolor paper that I got from the company Color It and they typically do coloring books and various art supplies, but they just came out with watercolor brush pens that I'm going to be reviewing here soon, and this watercolor paper. And I was expecting to get the pens uh, when they reached out to me to look into their products, and I realized they sent me this watercolor paper, and I was definitely skeptical from the beginning, but when I felt the texture of it and played around with it a little bit, it is nearly as good, if not maybe better, than the Canson XL watercolor paper that I use on a regular basis here on my channel. I typically use a wood pulp paper, which is the Canson XL, and then often we'll use the cotton paper for some pieces like this and other times when I want to use cotton paper, which is a little bit more pricey, but for a wood pulp paper that has uh, 
that is a really good quality. I was really impressed and I like this paper quite a bit. Uh, another big reason I didn't go with my cotton paper is the cotton paper that I typically use and like, which is the B Paper Company 100% uh, cotton paper is only sold in nine by six sheets at Michael's where I typically get paper um, on a more regular basis. And I wanted this piece to be quite large, uh, larger than I am typically used to using. Like I mentioned, this is the full nine by 12 uh, sheet. I just took it off of the paper pad and I am pretty impressed. It did warp. You can see there's a little bit of warping there, but I didn't tape it down and the warping isn't too bad and I can flatten that out um, like I typically do with a lot of my watercolor pieces. So that's really not an issue. You can see I'm adding my final details here with both the colored pencils and a little bit of white gel pen like I typically do. And this is a very similar piece to the very first piece where I combined an animal with plants, which was my peacock piece uh, from a little while back. You'll see it in a lot of my branding and banners and things like that. And I've wanted to do a fun squirrel in a similar style. So this is available on my Etsy. Like I mentioned, the original is for sale and 50% of the sale will be going to the World Wildlife Fund. So if you are so interested in purchasing that, please check out the link down below and that would be so awesome. Please make sure to check out everybody else in the collective. There are nine videos this round and I'm super excited to see them all myself. As always, I hope you have a creatively fulfilled day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.